Alex Thomas, you've been playing Returnal. I sure have. That's that game uh, from Sony. The game by Housemark that is 3D, which is weird for them. It is, and I'm super impressed what they've managed to do so far. Yeah, I remember seeing the the trailer for announcing Returnal. I'm like, okay, this looks kind of neat. Don't really know what's going to happen. And any expectations I had for the game going into it, just like completely shattered above and beyond. I'm having so much fun checking this game out. Wow, that is fantastic news. And I'll, I will go ahead and preface this whole discussion by saying these are just preview impressions. Full written video review, all that stuff will be coming later. But for now, we're talking about the first couple of biomes and kind of just your early impressions. Is that right? Absolutely. Sweet. So, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what we saw in the, the trailers that we know already, you're playing as a pilot named Celine. She's crash landing on this alien world and everything is kind of terrifying. Um, it's built as a roguelike, which we all saw. It's going to have a whole lot of nice um, bullet hell combat to it. But what really caught me off guard when it comes to the gameplay and everything I experienced in the first couple hours I've tried out is it reminds me more of the Metroid Prime series than anything else. Huh. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, you have... The, the absolute basics when you're starting out. Uh, Celine's got her handgun. She's going to go out into the wilderness. She's there to try and track down a signal. Uh, I believe it's called White Shadow. She's trying to find this signal, which is the reason that brought her to this eldritch, monstrosity-filled uh, alien planet. So you start out, you just have the pistol, you have some very few basic abilities, and like a standard roguelite, you're gonna get all sorts of buffs as you're going along, you're gonna be able to upgrade your weapons, get all these nice little enhancements to help you along the way, and as soon as you die, you're back to start. Um, the nice thing that I really enjoyed with this, narrative-wise, is the fact that Celine recognizes that she's died. She wakes up back at the crash. She knows what she did. She knows what she's been through. And she's terrified because she can't seem to break this loop. Um, as you're progressing through the stages, which, by the way, they're actually procedurally generated. And in a lot of these roguelikes, huh. when they use procedurally generated levels, you start to get used to the pattern. You recognize the room. You know where the bad guys are going to be, that sort of thing. And I haven't had that sense really hit me with this one. So you might go into a room, let's say it's got five possible doors that'll go different ways, and maybe you'll encounter it again later on, but you'll walk through from a different door. Things will be slightly moved around a bit, and it's just fresh enough and smooth enough that it really doesn't feel like this is just like a procedurally generated shortcut for the longevity of the game but that it's actually this mutating, changing planet every time you play, which is the, the key focus of the narrative here. Nice. Um, yeah. As you're exploring, you're seeing uh, ledges you can't reach to, barriers you can't get past, all this sort of stuff. And the equipment you need to get through them is what you're going to find later on in the game, and that's the mm. stuff that will stick with you. So... You know, you might fly through the first biome pretty quickly, having to pass by all these things you can see just out of reach. You get to the second biome, you pick up a new piece of gear, and suddenly next time you die, you can explore more, you can do more, you have a reason to kind of hang around and go back over where you've been before. Huh, interesting. That reminds me a lot, actually, of Dead Cells, where there was... It wasn't necessarily obvious where those areas were, but there were tons of places that you couldn't get to until you unlocked X, Y, Z thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've been on a real kind of journey with this game. I haven't touched it yet, but when it was announced, I was like, amazing. How's Mark? They've made some really cool stuff. Can't wait to see what they do in 3D. And then the hype kind of died down a little bit. And it was like, eh. I don't know. Is this gonna is this gonna really do the trick? Is this really one of our like triple A PlayStation games that we're gonna love for years and years? But based on the recent trailers, man, it looks so frantic and awesome. It is, and I mean, combat too. Uh, they're they're pretty generous with how the way the weapons work when you're trying to 
shoot all those creatures coming at you. Um, th instead of just your standard, you know, little reticle on the screen and your bullets are going exactly there, it gives you a nice bit of a, a berth. And as long as the target is within there, you're firing, the bullets have some minor homing. It's going to help you with the aiming because you're spending most of your time dodging all those bullets, all the creatures that are flying at your face and trying to tear you apart. Nice. Uh, I also, I really like the fact that while you're shooting, you can um, hip fire, you can be shooting down sights, which is how you activate your uh, alternate fire, which can be numerous different types of weapons or uh, different types of shots. You know, there's explosive rounds, there's uh, your own uh, bullet hell shots back and things like that. But you can do all of this while you're dodging, while you're running, while you're jumping. So it's not like a stop and shoot or like just run and shoot. You can be shooting and dodge to get through everything. So compare this gameplay to something that I might recognize. Because to me, it it looks like it might feel like the Earth Defense Force games a little bit. Um, I feel Defense Force isn't going to be fast enough as a comparison. Got it. Uh, oddly enough, if I'm going to throw something at you as a comparison for the combat, I'd say Doom 2016. Really? Oh. I I have walked into a room before and uh, suddenly five enemies spawn and I go, no problem, I can take care of this. I'm constantly moving, running, dodging, I'm jumping, I'm shooting, I'm firing off whatever I can, I'm using the environment to my advantage, and just as I take them out, suddenly there's a second wave that's just spawned and I have to worry about guys that are flying through the air at me, they're shooting lasers, there's different patterns, some of them are trying to melee me, and you are constantly on the move. You don't have the luxury of taking a break. Man, that's so hard to, to nail that balance too, that kind of flow where you feel like there's a natural next thing to do, but it is also skill-based that, you know, your success is based on how, how well you manage uh, everything that's going on in the environment. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, for all the times that I've died, you know, I, I've had runs so far where I start and I've managed to get to the fourth biome. You know, I've gotten a ton of upgrades, I've done all these great things, and I've had other runs where, due to the nature of procedurally generated rooms, uh, I've gotten in for maybe three minutes and just been absolutely swarmed and decimated and I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of the roguelike. I mean, we talk about that on the podcast basically constantly. Um, and that's that's always the challenge of these games is there are so many of them and people are often so tired of them that trying to do something new and something that's going to resonate with players can be really tough. But it, it sounds like maybe they've struck a pretty good balance here. They're doing a great job with all the little details coming together, which um, the, the two other points that I would want to touch on, uh, lean into this. One of these, the use of the dual senses haptics, because mm -hmm. man, do they do a good job with that. And uh, the other part is uh, the collectibles, actually, the things you're going to find in your environments, oh. because it's not just going to be uh, you know, you're in the biome, you're going point A to point B, you want to get to the next biome and complete the story. Uh, they've added to the map, it's a very nice little mini-map you get, by the way. It's super easy to read, it's great to navigate, but it's a simple glance. But uh, any doorway that's going to lead you towards the main story is going to be shaped like a square. Any doorway that has side content or additional stuff is going to be shaped like a triangle. So if you want to scour and find other things, you can. And there's actually plenty to find. Um, not only is there uh, upgrades, uh, random rooms that are going to give you more consumable items and artifacts for th uh, enhancing your stats and abilities, but uh, two of the key upgrades to find are um, uh, language uh, blocks uh, of the aliens that live on this planet. So you need to collect them all to read these other signs and get the messages they're leaving, mm. which is, um, oddly enough, each biome has its own complete set. So even if you've you know totally run through the first biome, it's super easy to get to number two. Maybe you want to go back and explore to find all those, you know, you're missing a word, you're missing a phrase, things like that, to get that completionist, to learn all the language, to see what, what happened before you arrived. But um, the, the really good one, that I, I love to come across is 
uh, the dead bodies of Celine and her recordings from other times she's tried and failed huh. in this loop. So it's, meta. It's just phenomenal. Like the, yeah. one of the ones you, you encounter early on, you pick up the recording and she goes, oh, well, this is my hundredth, hundredth try. And she says, I don't remember recording this. What is she talking about? Nice. Man, I really love that. I love that whole kind of metagame aspect and the fact she's aware. But uh, I really, really love what you said about the the subtle cueing on the shape of the doors. Because there's, there's nothing more gamery than heading partway down a path and then turning around because you're convinced that it's the right way to go and you want to go the wrong way first. But you know, yes. having a little cue like the shape of a door, brilliant. You know, you progress when you're ready, or you can go to the side and, and check out some other stuff. And uh, Hades actually did that too, where, where you could kind of pick and choose where you wanted to progress, or if you wanted to go check out a boss or not. For sure, it's it was just so great because you know I did a couple of runs where I thought, hey, I'm gonna try to get as many you know beneficial stats and buffs and things before i go to the next biome and after i died a couple of times i thought okay let's try to just push on ahead in the story mm -hmm. and you just have that free choice uh the haptics though oh boy it's just i mean the only downside is you know using that rumble constantly the controller dies slightly faster but we're still talking up like four hours on a full charge okay okay um you feel the raindrops as they hit Celine's helmet. You feel each gun uh, just a little bit differently. The impact of dropping on the ground from a height. Just, it, it's these little extra details. Uh, the environment, just all kinds of things just coming through into the controller. And it's, it's still one of those things that's so new and so fresh yeah. that not a lot of games have had an opportunity to really uh, lean into it and use that technology that it's it's so hard to accurately describe how great it feels. Yeah, I'm really excited that we're getting into that kind of space where stuff that was built specifically for these features is coming out. Because um, I, I know the, the Sony press stuff is also really leaning into the 3D audio side of things too. Um, that's, that's obviously a little tougher to test unless you've got the right headset, but... Um, yeah, glad to see these features actually being utilized. There's so much risk of those things just falling by the wayside right away, <laughs> you know, right after a console comes out. You know, like, yeah, you know, the Kinect died right away and whatever, whatever, whatever. But yeah, anyways, carry on. That's total and side note. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I also went into this thinking you have your roguelite, usually it's, you know, here's the simple story you're getting from point A to point B done. But the horror element into this really? is just so good. Nice. Like, like, she's she's a very strong character, Celine. She's not the damsel in distress. She's not crying about what's happening, but she's, she's freaked out for good reason. She keeps dying and coming back to life on this planet. And I keep <laughs> saying like eldritch lovecraft cthulhu like th th this kind of stuff is what's here all these monsters have tentacles and they're mutated and there's creepy teeth and strange organic materials all over the place and uh one of my favorite things when i was playing comes from the trailers that we've seen where as you're walking through the area suddenly there's the house that celine grew up in and she can't believe it. She's just staring at it and she's trying to figure out why is it here? It can't be here. And she goes up to the door and as soon as you go into the house, it switches to first person and it feels like Silent Hill PT style, like <laughs> um, something yes. has to come out at you at some point. So good. Uh, I've just, I've been having such a blast with this. Like I couldn't believe how easily I just let the time go by. And I mean, I've got two of the DualSense controllers, one's always charging. And I'm just like, oh, I got to switch my controller? Done. Okay, let's keep going. And that sounds awesome, Alex. I'm glad you're having a good time with this. When does Returnal come out? Uh, that's dropping at the end of the month. I believe it's on the 30th? Question mark? Sweet. And uh, yeah, 30th. April 30th. Perfect, and we can look forward to your review in a few days here, like a week or so, right? 
yes, the hardest part is going to be keeping it to a readable amount that isn't a novel. <laughs> That's always the challenge, man. It's always the challenge. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, gamers out there, keep your eyes locked in on CogConnected.com, CogConnected on the YouTube, all over the social media for more on Returnal. Alex, thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. See you later, man. Later. I won't give up.